Extreme 3D Frog on a Lily Pad Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a really cute little frog on a lily pad nail art design. And the nail itself is a sheer blue, which is just a gorgeous color. It looks very water-like and very summery and aquatic. So that part is fun. And then there's a lily pad with a very extreme 3D frog on it. If you guys like this design but you're not feeling the frog, I have a very similar design from a year ago that has a water lily and then a little koi fish swimming in the water. So they're really similar. This is kind of this year's updated version. So I'll put a link to that past video in the description box below and I will see you in my next video. So I'm going to begin with an overlay of a very sheer blue acrylic. This blue acrylic is actually one that I made because I couldn't find one that was really quite what I was looking for. So I just took and I put some of my clear acrylic into a separate dish and then I grabbed a scoop of blue and I mixed it in. You may have to do kind of a couple of trials and errors because sometimes blue pigment from a different color of acrylic won't mix in very well. It'll stay kind of clumpy and make your acrylic not have that beautiful sheer quality but give it kind of a splotchy look. So just figure out if you have one that'll work and hopefully you do, fingers crossed. After you have that done, because it is mostly clear acrylic, I'm just going to go ahead and file it into shape with my e-file, starting out with a fairly coarse bit to remove any bulk, and then I'm going to switch to a much finer bit just to smooth out the surface texture. That In this particular design, that's not nearly as important because we're not doing any painting directly on it or any sculpting directly on it. So you don't have to buff it or worry about it as much, but it's always nice to have that as a base anyways. Then I'm going to take a bit, uh, a bead of acrylic that is a green and yellow, kind of a mixed up bead, and just I swirled it together as you saw with the tip of my brush on a nail form backing, and I'm going to flatten that out into my lily pad. And that mixed green and yellow bead isn't going to necessarily show up as being a marbled bead on there, but it's just going to give you a little bit more of a variegated look, which just adds some realism. After you have your lily pad all finished and it's it's set up enough that you can pick it up easily with your brush. Pick it up and set it up, set it on the nail near the cuticle area. Then I kind of ruffled the edges of my little little lily pad a little bit more. Then I'm going to fill in underneath it with some clear acrylic. You can either use regular clear or you can use your clear blue mix, whichever way you want to go. You know, depends on your mood or whatever. If you've already got the clear blue out, might as well use it, right? Then I'm going to take and I'm going to make the little base for my frog. So I started out with his body shape. And this is thinking of it from the side. So you want to do the side view of your frog's body. And I did this with a darker shade of green that I used on my lily pad. Just so that he shows up really well against the lily pad. And then I'm going to sculpt two skinny little bar shapes for the start of his arms. So the first one, and then I will do the second one. And then just let these pieces set up completely so that they're fully hard. They're like little potato chips. And so just kind of, I like to work on, I always work on multiple nail designs at a time. So whenever I have something that needs to set, I can just put that to the side and I can keep working on something else. So if you're doing this in a full set and you're doing all different nails, make your little frog bit and then move on and work on something else in the set and then come back to it. So glue the frog body onto the lily pad with the butt really close to the back of your lily pad so that there's plenty of room to add his arms out front. Then I'm going to take more of my green color and I'm going to start building up his body. So put down a bead and then just sort of float it across that entire frog shape. Let it set for a little while so that you're not working with such a liquidy mix. And then begin to sort of carve in the shape of the frog's neck out a little bit and just sort of fill him in. I'm adding a little bit more acrylic to his body area. I recommend if you're doing this to have a couple different frog pictures, have some frog pictures side view and some frog pictures front view, back view, just because this is a design that's 360. You can look at it from every single angle. You want your frog to look like a frog from every single angle. And if you just look at it from a side view, it might not look anywhere near correct from a front view. So make sure that you've got plenty of references so that you get your froggy frog shaped. Add a little bit more over his head. And I used, I didn't use actual um, real frog pictures. I used little frog clip arts because I didn't want it to be quite that realistic. I wanted to be kind of a funny frog, a cute little frog. So I went the clip art route. But if you wanted to, you can use whatever you like to use as your reference. After you have the one side done, flip that guy over and repeat the process and do the exact same thing to the other side. I like to, when I'm using this, I, or when I'm doing a design like this, I like to kind of go back and forth some from side to side because especially when you're doing the second side, when you're carving in say the neck area, you want to make sure you're looking at both sides so that you place the neck in the same area on both sides of your frog so that he looks perfectly symmetrical 
no matter which angle that you're looking at him from, like I was saying before, this is a 360 degree design. And make sure that you sculpt your little froggy's cheeks out a little bit more so that they are sticking kind of, you know, out to the side, nice and poofy. And give him a little froggy smile later on. Give him plenty of space for all his facial features. Plus, his eyes are going to set on top of those cheeks, basically, so you want to make sure you have plenty of platform for that. I'm going to then smooth out his back a little bit with more acrylic right down the spine area. Kind of flatten out and smooth out any area, any of it that you need to. Sometimes when you do this where you have a design where you have that middle base piece in the center, there's a ridge right down the middle that you can see from that. You can either get rid of it with a little bit of acrylic covering it up, or you can get rid of it with some acrylic on top of it. So you can either, or you can file it or you can cover it up. Yeah. Then take a little bits of green acrylic and plop those right on top of the cheeks like I was saying. And then take a dotting tool and push into them to create the eye take and there's the second one and I like to do put both of them down because then you give the first one a little bit of a chance to set before you try to mess with it with the dotting tool and it gives you just a little bit more of a even system so then after you've got both eyes about the same size same placement take your dotting tool dip that into some clear acrylic so it won't stick and push that in fill those little eye holes in with some white acrylic just like so kind of flatten them out if you need to and then after you have that done, I'm going to just kind of grab my little frog arms and I like to set them on my hand or somewhere where they're kind of set off and then you can grab them and then with a little bit of nail glue, you're going to want to glue them in place. So just take and I like to use a tweezers or something that's a little bit more delicate than my big old fingers when you're working with something so small like this. And so just like I said, a little bit of nail glue just to hold them in place temporarily. So pick up the little arm and then set them in place so that they're in the shoulder on one end and then they touch the lily pad on the other. Then with more of your green acrylic, we're going to add some more depth to everything. So kind of the whole process with making these extreme creatures the way I do it, and obviously there are a million and six ways to do anything, is I like to make kind of a base piece and then build off of it and make the base piece at least partially the right size for something. So the right length or the right width or the right length and width, just not the depth. Some people, when they sculpt something 3D, they like to build it up. So I like to do just kind of like different mounds of acrylic to kind of get that shape. So there's all different ways and techniques and preferences. There's, uh, there's no right or wrong. So after you have the arms done and the little hands then on a nail form backing once again i'm going to be sculpting the base of the legs and these ones instead of making a long strip you're going to be making more of like a softly rounded triangle and let those set for just a moment kind of continue to push them in if you want you can kind of separate the thigh from the calf just a little bit not i mean you don't have to worry about too much but if you want to start that division you can go ahead and do that if you didn't want to you just wanted to go hey eh, i'll do it later that's also an option then you're going to glue the hind leg in place on each side and so when you're looking at it from the top view like this you want to create kind of a soft v so the legs don't go straight out away from the body and they also don't go and hug the body either they're just like a little bit out little butterfly legs Add some more thickness to the legs of your froggy. And at this point, like I said, you could make the division between the calf and the thigh, or you could do it like I did it and kind of start sculpting that in earlier on. Even if you did sculpt it earlier on like I did, you might need to add some more to it now anyways. Just depends on how thick your legs were in the beginning. But if they were a decent thickness, then you can kind of skip a step if you do it in the beginning like I did. And these ones, it's harder to work inside the legs because there's just this little, little gap between the frog body and the frog leg. So it's a harder little spot to work in and I would definitely recommend having a 3D sculpting brush to help you out with. Or possibly, depending if you like to use silicone tools, if those are something that you kind of keep in your arsenal, a silicone tool might also be just the trick here. Then you're also going to need the sculpted little froggy foot on the lily pad with that same green color. Just kind of use little beads and it's so small that it's my this green acrylic that I'm using for my frog isn't super opaque so the little frog feet don't really show up that much just because it's such a thin layer that most of my frog feet came actually with paint later on so now with a darker shade of green paint I'm going to be adding some shading on my frog it's not super dark it's not like a black green or a really dark forest green it's just a little bit darker which means that when I'm adding these little shadings on there, you almost can't tell in the video, but it's adding some wonderful depth in real, in real life to my frog, which makes it just a little bit, a little bit more realistic and looks like he's 
just a little bit more frog-like. And this is also making it so that I can add some definition to his toes way easier. Then with a really light green or light yellow color, I'm going to be filling in basically the lower side of the jaw and then the entire tummy and the insides of the legs. And same thing, this is very kind of an awkward thing to be working on because you're working like underneath the frog. You gotta have little brushes that can fit up in there and just kind of try not to do too much at once. Don't load your brush with paint. Do just a little bit of paint at a time. If you do make a mistake, you know, you can always, I got a little bit of paint on my lily pad. If you take and have a, another clean brush next to you that you can have with some water in it, you can usually with acrylic paint, if you're quick enough, if you have a damp clean brush and you just sort of wipe over it, the paint will come right up and you don't have to worry about it. If you make a mistake, you can erase it. Then I'm going to be taking some black paint. I'm going to be doing some outlining and some details. So I gave him a smile, some pupils in his eyes, a little bit of outlining around the eyes and some nostrils, and then I'm going to do some shading under my frog and just kind of around the lily pad just a little bit with diluted black paint. Then I'm going to apply a layer of gel sealer over the background, make that water nice and shiny. That's, I have this glass nail is kind of what I think of it. It's like a glass slipper, slipper, like a Cinderella glass slipper color. And then some matte top coat over your frog. And this guy is all done. I am a huge frog fan. I have had frogs as pets before. I had a leopard frog named Frederica when I was probably, I don't know, eight or nine. And she was absolutely wonderful. I think my claim to fame in elementary school was the eclectic range of pets that I had. But I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. Frogs and all kinds of critters are very near and dear to my heart. Please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!